Hello, my name is Ben Winters and I'm a music lecturer in the School of Arts and Cultures. When I think of Frankenstein, it's not Mary Shelley's novel that springs immediately to mind, but the Universal Studio horror films of the 1930s, and in particular 1935's Bride of Frankenstein. As someone who researches film music of the period, I find the film and its music fascinating. Whereas the 1931 Frankenstein featured a monster denied the power of speech and an almost non-existent music score, the sequel not only allowed the monster to talk, but also gave him and the other characters another voice in the form of Franz Waxman's music. As a result, the music helps the film steer a course between camp humour, horror and some pretty serious social commentary. Franz Waxman was Jewish and had fled Nazi Germany, and in alluding to the music of the Austrian composer Gustav Mahler, whose music was also recognised as speaking for society's outsiders, Waxman's score not only helps us sympathise with the monster, but also draws our attention to the enormous contemporary relevance of the story, in which an angry mob demonises and persecutes the monster for being different. The Bride's climactic creation sequence is perhaps the most musically dramatic in the film, but I also find the ending of the film interesting. Despite the fact that Boris Karloff's monster, suffering the anguish of rejection by the creature created to be his bride, destroys himself, the laboratory and the bride along with it, her musical theme appears to survive. And thus the bride's dangerous sexuality appears to live on in the form of her human counterpart, Elizabeth, a rather subversive ending that contemporary Hollywood censors appear to have missed. You can learn more about the possible meanings of music in Hollywood film and study some of the music of Gustav Mahler in A342, Central Questions in the Study of Music.